Which, <laughs> unless you did. Ah, crap. I didn't do that. Did you start already? Yeah. <laughs> Just, that's fine. Probably. Wait. This is the player four player oh, we started. Join us each week <laughs> to talk about video games, entertainment, and pop culture, and bring in guests yes. from the Rooster Teeth community. E. Player four has entered the game. Malachi sounds a little exasperated. Hello, welcome to the Player Four podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Shagazir, aka Tr. Justin, aka Shagers here on the <laughs> Teeth website. I am the second host, Alex, aka Chaos Black Twenty One. I'm Malachi, aka Sukikiba. and I'm Joseph, aka Jay Dunlap on the Rooster Teeth website. Oh, so we're we have two hosts and two guests. I'm gonna slap you, Tristan. <laughs> my, how is this? My, how is this my fault? Because I, I'm the one that's gonna be queuing the garbage up and you freaking mess with my mojo. Doing the garbage up. The the song is not garbage. It is a beautiful song. I, I know. love this song. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, Joseph but was not ready for that at all. It's just, it's well, just I was told there was a cold open, and as soon as it started to like die, I was like, all right, time to start the song. I hope everyone likes our new format. It's great. So we've got a few topics for today, and I'm reading the topics off the screen. It is Malachi's Meanderings. Malachi's <laughs> Meanderings. <laughs> Skyrim, <laughs> poop and butt, and what we're playing. Oh God. I said it. You can't stop me. Now we have to talk about it. Now we have to talk about it, which is great because I, I'm con I'm concerned I actually have something to contribute to that segment. So, <laughs> it's Wednesday. It's a little after 8.30. Malachi on the it's East 7:30. Coast anyway. <laughs> I, said, I, I qualified it, okay? I don't need you correcting my corrections. Thank you, though. Uh, Malachi, what what are you what are you going to meander about today? I think that you were you were excited about a movie you saw recently. Yeah, but I first want to state that you're paying my butt again. Okay, I accept that. <laughs> I'm a pain right, so we're already into the poop and butts, apparently. <laughs> yeah, no, save I'll it for the poop and butts right, segment. All right, fine, I'll save the freaking <laughs> other segment. I can freaking give you a slap across the back of the head. Anyways, um, <laughs> so, so uh, I uh, did happen to go uh, see the Dragon Ball Z Super uh, Broly movie which uh, is supposed to be canon to the actual series, which is uh, kind of cool, because most of the uh, previous, uh, in the Dragon Ball Z series, um, all the movies were not considered canon or part of the story. They were kind of like a neat little uh, story based on the world. Um, like a lot of anime. But nobody ever looked back in the episodes and said, hey, re remember that time when we took out a giant tree that was going <laughs> to eat the world? Right. A, a lot of anime do that though, where they're like, "Here's a movie." By the way, it doesn't actually tie into anything. <laughs> yeah, but this is a movie. It's not canon. I'm not going to remember any of you people. Dragon Ball Z Super Broly did actually pretty well in theaters, so they actually brought it to my area, which was fantastic to see an anime in theaters for once. Um, unfortunately, I had to watch it in English. Not that that's a bad thing, but I prefer the subtitle personally. Because bad guys always sound so Tell much me. better in Japanese. I'm sorry. I had watched the I uh, when they had a fairy tale movie come out, the latest fairy tale. I went and saw it in theaters, and it was in English, and I was a little sad. Because I hate you that you have a theater that has that around you. You suck. Anyways, um, so all in all, for the movie wise, uh, story really, really thin. Not really grab you at all. Um, Do you think that's just so that they can more easily slip it into the canon without requiring people to watch it? There wasn't, so that there wouldn't be a lot that you missed. I, I want to say probably that wouldn't be a bad uh, kind of hypothesis with it. But last time on all of Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> um, <laughs> it was it was a stupid simple plot, and um, it, you got to see some back history of. Uh, of you got to see Planet Vegeta, you got to see the whole thing. You got to see uh, Bardock in it. 
Um, and actually Goku's mom, too. Um, so you got to see a lot of cool things, a lot of interesting things, but the, the premise of the actual movie itself, like I said, was really simple. Um, I don't know if I want to elaborate. Goku doesn't have a mom. <laughs> I, I don't want to elaborate too much. Um, because I don't know if we want to put spoilers or spoilers. Um, uh, and I'm so probably not gonna see it. It's really simple, but the fight scenes were pretty ridiculous. I mean, there was a lot of effort put into the animation for the fight for the the battle between Broly, they reached, Goku, and Vegeta. Did, did they reach nine thousand? Oh my god! It was. It was actually really cool because they had a lot of um, your typical animation, but there was a lot of uh, 3D mixed yeah. into it. A lot of, you know, like panning shots, uh, uh, more of the, um, I don't know, actually, I don't know the medium for it. Um, I mean, they are CG. It's it's CG. Well, yeah. Yeah. But the it's it's the, the the style they they basically use the fight in during the fight they mix two styles of mediums, um. So it's a multimedia fight. Yeah, it was, it was, awesome. It was really cool. A lot uh, of so like three D CG and regular CG. Yeah, well, more like animation type CG with like, um, a fighter game CG. So you get more of the characters like roundness to them, more the, the the that kind of depth. You get uh, more of the characters just like crouch hopping around. Like <laughs> <Kyle>. <laughs> um, so I had more of a feel of a fighting game uh, kind of art style, along with your traditional a uh, anime or animated style. Could that be like partially attributable to the success of the? Um... Dragon Ball Z video games where they had the, you know, anime video game graphics style and it and it seemed to work really well. It's possible. Um I really can't say much about that. Uh but yeah. So, so plot wise you're not really recommending this film, it sounds no. like, but it sounds like the fights were pretty fun. If you just wanna kick back with your friends and watch just a really cool uh like Dragon Ball Z style fighting, it's great. It's at, they did phenomenal with the with the fight. Um, like yeah, plot wise, it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! It, it's Ouch. like it's it's so simple. Oh, that's you how know. you really feel. <laughs> so simple. You know, Malachi, we have a we have a theater here in in Boston called the Brattle Theater that is a small theater that mostly shows off mainstream films because it's only got the one screen and they highly advertise their showings and they show a lot of anime movies there oh, this fucking suck excuse my <laughs> language beep bleep ah uh, but so yeah i got to watch that um so yeah if you want a nice uh, dragon ball z movie it's good but don't be impressed by its story um I promise. I, I like how you're friends. telling people not, <laughs> not to be impressed. impressed. Like, don't, don't you dare be impressed by that story. <laughs> <laughs> don't you encourage them to run like this. <laughs> but anyway, so that was one thing with me. Another quick tidbit that's been going on with me. I finally uh, got my butt around the schedule. It's actually a bit of a pain uh, to I mean, schedule it my... It's a pretty big schedule to get your butt around. Yeah, I know. Uh, for <laughs> my uh, handgun safety course. What? Yeah. What indeed? Well, my dad has a lot of uh, pistols, so he wanted me, uh, well, encouraged me to get it in case I ever need to take them from him or in future, 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 future instances. I can take uh, them I mean, from like when zombies that, take that, over. <laughs> that cir not to get too far off topic here, but that circumstance is, is getting less and less likely because of all the problems with um inheriting firearms. Oh yeah. And yeah, because a lot of states don't ha uh, getting the illegal stuff. A lot of states <laughs> don't have the um requirement for certain legal paperwork to be done 
when somebody gives their gun to a family member, especially like a father well, to son kind of thing, you... and this causes an undocumented transfer of a firearm and therefore illegal possession, and then things tend to occur because they can't enforce stuff because nobody suddenly knows where the gun is. No, yeah, I understand that. And some things that do make it easier is probably something my dad is going to do with me is uh, double register it. You can register it to two people. Or, like, mm. they're, they're, I, I don't know the, the actual term, but there's a way to, to register it saying, yeah, this is my, my dad, and it's also registered to me so I can take it there there is a I it was explained to me I haven't had a chance to sit down and read about it but I do know yeah. there is a way I if I'm not mistaken to where it's double uh, co co-registered co-registered mm. yeah it's just it's a I only bring it up because it's just a it's a tough sensitive topic yeah um, especially at the moment well the the main reason like I said is because I would like to be able to take care of them if ever need be um and also to spend time with my dad and do it because he does enjoy um uh pest or going to the range and uh doing target practice with him so it's something i can do with him so those are the reasons why i'm getting it and so that's moving along it's just something that's going on with me so anyways all right and then speaking about doing stuff with other people you guys are want to talk about the skies of rim indeed um there were a couple um things that we wanted to talk about there i think we should start with uh joseph since he had uh some things he wanted to say on the topic and then we were going to move into something a little more um specific about it yes me building the drama with vagary um, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Joseph, you you Thank brought you. This, this this topic to my attention. Uh, talk at me. Uh, which thing? The one how I've been playing Skyrim recently. That that, that one. I want to know how you're feeling because uh, I know that you had put out some tweets saying, you know, I'm playing Skyrim. Tell me how to enjoy this game. <laughs> so I want to know if it's been working. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. That was a genuine call for help because I was playing Skyrim and I didn't know what I was quote unquote supposed to be doing. Right. And I got some good Anything. advice from like four different people. It was great. And it was overall just play the game and do whatever you feel like doing. So I tried that for about a day. I got bored. I started a new save of the first Mass Effect game for a day. Then I came back to it. And I sort of got a feel for it. And it's been fine since then. It's been about a month since then. And I've been playing pretty much every day. Michael's been playing with me. Michael's actually in the living room playing on the Xbox right now. And I've been working on mods on the PC today. Oh. Yeah. Working on mods? Wait, what do you mean? I have I bought the PC version this week and I've been working on putting mods on there. Oh, like going to the market and getting them. <laughs> Yes. I, so I thought it was thing. like, you figured out how to make mods? Because I want to figure out how to make mods. Well, that'd be amazing, but no, right. I'm not that. <laughs> you just replace all the in-game music with music you wrote? I was going to say that would be the only mod I could do. <laughs> just replace all the in-game NPCs with the pictures of your family's faces. Oh, God. I could, I could replace all the voice acting with clips from our table read. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to find walk around that game, your game at some point and find a, a bar where two guys are sitting at the table and it's Luigi and the Joker heckling each other. <laughs> yeah. That sounded kind of gay, dude. <laughs> dude that would, I, would, I would die. That would be so funny. Uh, so I had a character, my first character I was playing on, and that was the character I made in my first sort of trial run of Skyrim. It was uh, it was Argonian, and I got murder, murder lizard. lizard. Yeah, murder lizard. So I came back to him, and he was murder lizard, and he was assassinating people. And then I had a second character. It's Wizard Kitty that I've been playing recently. Oh. Wizard Kitty. Michael's been playing as a Nord with a great sword, and he nice. wanted to marry Lydia, so he married Lydia. I did that. She's great. She really, honestly, was like the only person I could form any sort of attachment to. That they threw at me throughout the storyline, so I'm just like, yeah. Nah, I think there was a different one that I married. 
my wizard kitty married the merchant lady that you give the mammoth tusk to. Uh, I think that's who I married. And it's very odd because the house with her and Lydia's there. So it's just like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> These are my two wives. <laughs> One of well, them's not actually my well, wife, but she's you know, sitting here eating my bread. My house Carl, quote-unquote wife. <laughs> We're just friends. <laughs> You're gonna be okay there, Alex. I feel like there's some tension in the household. So I wanted to bring I wanted to bring it up. Sorry, Alex, about the tension in your household, because <laughs> in the early days of our podcast, that was something Tristan liked talking about was the Elder Scrolls franchise. I remember a friend of mine came on, and you guys talked about Skyrim and the next game and and the online the game. game before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I didn't. I didn't have a frame of reference like Malachi and Red vs. Blue in the early days of the podcast. So so now that I'm actually playing it, I wanted to, you know, bring it up. Tristan, we, we have common ground finally. Hey, have you um have you gotten into reading any of the books you're walking by, or is that still just like are they still just uh, background pieces? Murder Lizard collects every book he can find. He has resorted to stealing them. <laughs> and I have read some of them. I read the book that was claiming that Ulfric Stormcloak is a murderer. Yep. I've read a few of the history book, and otherwise I just sort of put them on my bookshelf, and I'm like, I'll get around to it. Mm. So so out, of, out of curiosity, since the beginning of the game presents you loosely with two sides of a conflict, have you yet chosen a side in that conflict? Murder Lizard is the save where I have chosen a side. So in that save, first I helped the Empire take over Skyrim, okay. and then I assassinated the Emperor. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work out for you. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I, don't know. I mean, I never, like I said, I haven't. I know that the last missions for the for the um hand Dark Brotherhood. Thank you. <laughs> I always see in my mind their their symbol, and I'm just like, yeah, hand has to be in their name because their symbol is a big hand. It's not. Uh, dark dark hand. <laughs> Dead hand. Um, I haven't. I never went all the way through the Dark Brotherhood storyline. It's too bad because I know that the last mission is actually pretty like awesome and like really like I've seen images from it where it's just like a, a totally. Um, you know, outside the game bounds area that you're that you perform the final mission in, um, which was kind of cool to me. Uh, and the idea that you are making potentially such a huge impact moving forward, um, I do find it very intriguing <laughs> that as somebody who fought for the Empire uh, against the Stormcloaks, uh, you you then chose to also murder the Emperor. <laughs> Well, the funny thing was, I got the quest to kill the Emperor, and I was like, huh, but I just joined the Empire, so I think I'm going to take care of that first. <laughs> I'm going to push their objectives and then kill their leader to watch their whole society crumble. I mean, it actually didn't do anything to the stability of Skyrim. It was, nah. just, it was just a story beat. Like, you yeah. show up, the Emperor's there, you kill him, and then you get a 40 gold bounty, and then you leave. <laughs> 40 gold for killing I Emperor. know, it was weird. There's no witnesses, <laughs> and also, why 40? I don't know. I mean, that's especially odd. Like, okay, so here's the thing. The entire plot of the previous game, which is The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion, was based around the idea that the whole world comes apart when someone assassinates the Emperor. Like, it just falls apart. Now, you have the benefit of, at this point... He was the last in his line, and there's a very long and sordid history of the power and influence of that line on the entire world. Um, and you know, go, when you start Skyrim, that it's 200 years after that moment, and they've been going through a real rough patch ever since he died. Um, and so this new emperor, like, if you read the stuff, you find out, well, nobody, there's a whole... Divi like Skyrim, who has always been super allied with the Empire, is really uneasy now because the late the you know this Emperor isn't uniting all of Tamriel like the last set of Emperors were doing, and in fact, 
like rolled over and gave the world to the elves when they decided they didn't like humans anymore. Um, and so Skyrim's like, that's why Skyrim's divided between the Stormcloaks and the Empire at this point, because a lot of them are still really loyal to the Empire, but they feel betrayed by it at the same time. Um, and, and so like, and there's books and books and pages and pages and hours of this content within the game that you can find and learn about. Um, if you haven't played the previous games to know about it. Um, and that's why it's, it's an interesting choice because like, so the, the final mission in, you know, spoiler alert, final mission in the dark brotherhood is you kill the current emperor, but this could be a good thing because the current emperor by De is deemed by almost everyone in the world to be weak and not leading uh, um, the empire of Tamriel in the direction it should be going anyway. And, and, and having chosen to, you know, give everything up to the power of the Aldmeri Dominion, who are generally considered to be in the wrong here. Now, this is a, a he, said, he, he said, she said situation, of course, because if you go back far enough in history, you find out that the Aldmeris, or at least some progenitor of the Aldmeris, owned basically the entire world until humans from the island of Atmora floated over on their little wooden boats and said, we like this land and you guys look weird. We're going to kill you and take the land. <laughs> that's how this, that's, that's the history of this conflict, is that after 4,000 years of that, of, of submitting to human rule or getting out of their way because they will just stomp you into the dirt. The elves said, you know what? Screw that. We were here first and they don't have a, 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 a septum on the throne anymore to protect them because the last septum died 200 years ago. Now is our chance, elves. Take back the land from the dirty humans. And it's like, well, there's a part of you that can't really blame them. And there's another part of you that says, yeah, but the empire has been working like with little missteps here and there for the last 4,000 years. Like why, why, why screw that up now? <laughs> um, so anyway, that's my digression into, uh, the lore of the elder scrolls. I hope I that you're enjoying the last it. Mission of the dark brotherhood being killing the emperor. I remember reading about that years ago. It could be an extra mission that got added after the fact. I, I mean, there is a mission to kill the emperor, but I don't remember that being the last mission. Well, the last mission could be, like, go talk to Sithis, but I don't know. Yeah, the last, I mean, so you kill the Emperor, and that's supposed to be, like, Dark Brotherhood proves that they can do whatever they're hired to do, and then you're in charge, and then you just do a bunch of missions for the Dark Brotherhood after that. It's just, like, a little repeatable quest, so. Yeah. Oh, Which I, 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 I don't know. Hmm? I mean, Alex was saying something. I interrupted. I mean, well, I don't. I just don't because I don't know where you are, so I don't want to. Anything. Yeah, that's like, fine. So you don't have to spoil it. that in case there's much more and more interesting. I was um, going to remark on the fact that it's interesting that the Dark Brotherhood wants to kill the Emperor to prove that you know they have world shaping power. When in Elder Scrolls Four, I think it was the Dark Brotherhood being manipulated by the speaker for um, Mehrunes Dagon, who killed the Emperor that time. So it's like, the Dark Brotherhood has already proved that it can kill powerful political leaders and get away with it? The storyline is, well, that was a long time ago, and we need to prove ourselves again, I essentially. Guess. <laughs> They've been sort of removed from that whole um, listener sort of thing with the, uh, the lady. Anyway... So they're worried that they don't have their following and that the world doesn't fear them the way that it should. I mean, it's it's not. I don't think it's a spoiler for an old you know game that's kind of been out for a while and the very first thing they <laughs> tell you. The game is only seven years old. It's still too soon. It's literally the first thing they tell you when you join is we don't we don't have a connection to the Night Mother anymore. So we just sort of people tell us about the ritual and we go and find the person. Oh, so, whereas so the, the is, argument that it was the Night Mother who specifically said the ritual is being performed, go here. Exactly. Right, uh -huh. right. And, and so I wanted to follow up on something you said, which was the entire plot of Oblivion, which I actually did read in one of the books, Yay. is that everything falls apart when you kill the Emperor. Yep. Well, in Skyrim, the first thing you hear is, oh yeah, uh, some guy killed the Emperor with his voice, and now there's a new one. And then if you join the Dark Brotherhood, you go and kill that one, and nothing changes. Wow. 
Okay, I didn't even remember that. Like, I just knew uh, what I remember, and uh, that's cool, um, because all I remembered was that a weak government was instituted after the fall of Tiber Septim and his bastard son in the in Elder Scrolls IV, um, and this is 200 years later, and humans don't, humans live longer in, in the Elder Scrolls than normal, but I don't think they live 200 years. Um, so I, I knew that there was at least, we were at least one emperor removed from that. I just didn't remember that supposedly a dragonborn had done it. Um, uh, I Wolf know huh? Wolfric Stormcloak is not a dragonborn, but he studied with the the uh, graybeards. Graybeards. But then when he heard there was a conflict with the elves, he rejoined the military and took that knowledge of the voice with him. Yep. And challenged the emperor to one on one combat, and then ripped him apart with his with his voice. Okay, I didn't remember that it was the Emperor he killed, which is silly, because that seems like something I should have remembered, so thank you. Um, I knew that he was in trouble because he had killed a political leader with his voice. I just didn't remember that it was the current Emperor. So apparently, uh, you can kill the Emperor, it's just a thing that happens now. It is, apparently. Getting, uh, yeah, I was getting the quest uh, line mixed up, so that, that's oh. correct. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm having fun playing the game. Thanks for your advice, Tristan. I'm Probably. sure Alex gave some advice along the way as well, because <laughs> pretty, pretty sure I was the last in this group to play it. It's, I had fun with the game. It's very open-ended. You just have to not expect them. So a lot of games today, and it's not a good thing or a bad thing, really, but a lot of games today are, are feeding you a storyline, and you expect to be following a character who has a particular personality, or in the case of, like, Mass Effect, you have some influence over what that personality is, but they have a personality. And so if you're used to that, because, like, I've been playing The Witcher uh, recently, and that's a very, here's a storyline that you're following, and while you can choose the main character's responses, it's all pretty much within his, per you don't really have that much influence over what his personality is. Um, and so it's kind of like, it's a beautiful game and, it, and it's a fun adventure, but it's kind of like following the plot rails. Whereas you go to something like Skyrim and it's very much without plot where like it has a main story that you follow that and it tell this is like, you can watch the movie that is the, the, the story of this game, but that's a very short plot. Um, and it's designed to be short and sweet and and explosively interesting uh, when it comes to how the fallout could affect the rest of the world. That's how every game has been. It's a formula. Um, but the the real draw and the real interest for, for more players tends to be that there's a thousand things to do outside of the main plot to get you you know, doing fun things or learning cool things or just, you know, being a part of the world, you know, from saving burning farms from raiders to helping somebody um, get away with their tryst, you know? Uh, real quick, before we run out of time, Tristan, why don't you give us the rundown of that mod that's coming out soon with Skyrim Multiplayer, which is the name of this episode in the first place. Right. You yeah, know, I was trying to find some information about it. So we coming out soon, according to all of our sources, uh, there is a mod um, coming to to Skyrim on Steam, um, and it's going to be a, a not a huge mod. You can download it for about um, 200 megabytes is what it said, although I've seen some conflicting numbers there. Um, and it's called um, Skyrim Together. And the idea is that it's going to make it so that you can go in and play Skyrim, but in the, a sort of more ESO style, you get to bring in up to eight of, you know, seven, uh, eight total of your friends and play in Skyrim in the, in the world with the, the with the, um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I'm blanking on the word I'm looking for. Um, the, the machine. Only I knew. I, uh, no, the 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 actual um. <laughs> forget it, forget it. Um, play in Skyrim multiplayer, do stuff together with friends. What I've been trying to find out is who's making it because it's not being offered through the Steam community mod market, the um the mod um workshop. 
Uh, it seems to be coming from outside that, and it seems to have been crowdfunded on Patreon. Uh, they haven't given an exact release date. It's going to go into a closed beta, and then a few weeks after that, it's going to go into open beta. Um, and that's supposedly happening pretty soon. Uh, but we don't have any exact dates yet. What I had been trying to figure out was who exactly was making it, if this was just community modders or if this was Bethesda, and I haven't been able to find an exact answer to that. The fact that it's been crowdfunded kind of steers me away from it being an official Bethesda thing, but there's also been some um, uh, official, uh, you know, licensed uh, producers of these types of things who have been crowdfunding lately, so I... It's a possibility. I just haven't been able to find exactly where it's coming from. I just know that it's not being made in the mod market. You download it from Steam outside of the uh, the mod market. It's not a huge download, and then you apply it to your game, and then you can invite people in. I know that currently they're doing their server nest in Europe. I'm hoping that like if they find success there, they'll then spread it to other uh, server nodes around the world so that more people can enjoy it with less latency. Um, and I know from what I've read that at its present build state, a lot of the stuff is in the game, but certain events like dragon attack events and things like that haven't been coded in yet. So it's, you know, most of what's available in Skyrim, less a few things here and there. But the idea is that you're playing Skyrim, and not ESO, and you get to have your friends there. So that should be interesting. And, and I'm kind of looking forward to see how that works out, because I know that a lot of the... Uh, community around Bethesda games has been um, decrying the uh, Fallout 76 fiasco and saying that really it should have just been done like this and just been a multiplayer mod applied to the last Fallout game. So, Was that the only complaint they had against 76? No, but I feel like... <laughs> no, there's been other long. mess ups too. <laughs> I, I just sort of addressed 76 as one big pile of problems pile of and, poop and, and i still play it it's a bit of poop and butts all right guys that. it's that time again oh but we didn't even get to poop and butts yeah well, that's okay because i'd just be telling tristan he's a fool yeah i thought poop and butts was our next topic and you didn't even put get getting the flip out of here yeah whatever happened to getting the flip out of here being I an did official have, topic we, we don't have time for it we don't we're have time, time to get, to get the fuck out of here? here? We're just going to stay here. <laughs> we're just stuck in the podcast yeah, forever. We don't have time to get the flip out. It's the worst oh, no. episode of Black Mirror ever. Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. All right, everyone. It was nice. Uh, hope you enjoyed the episode and have a wonderful night. Good night, everyone. Join us on Discord. Yay. Hashtag goodbye. Bye. Good night, Caboose.